flash on that. <laughs> right, so you've asked me to do a bit of an overview of what this topic's going to have. So hopefully this has got most of the key ideas that we're going to cover, and if not, we'll discover that as we do the topic, and you can ask me to clarify those as we go. Basically though, this topic is about you calculating the quantities of things that are present. And in chemistry we use moles, moles per litre, grams, grams per litre, and percentage as our main quantities that we use to describe things. So in the last topic, you were looking at things and saying what is present by the reactions it had. This time we're going to tell you what the reactions are going to be, and you have to tell us how much of something there is. So we'll tell you, for example, this is a sodium hydroxide solution, and you have to tell me how much sodium hydroxide is in that solution. So to get us started, we have to have a, have a good understanding of what amount means in chemistry. An amount is a number of particles. So chemistry is all about particles. We count those particles in things called moles, which we did a little bit on in a previous lesson, where the mole is six, roughly, six times 10 to the power of 23 particles. So if it's, in, if it's a metal, it's that many atoms of that metal. From our amount, we can also, sorry, we can calculate our amount if we know the mass of something and we can calculate its molar mass. So to actually calculate amount, we need to know these two pieces of information. So we find the molar mass from the periodic table. And we use a thing called the relative molar mass, or relative molecular mass. That's those numbers with the decimal places after them. So for chlorine, I hope I've got this one right, 35.45 would be the molar mass of a chlorine atom. So for a chlorine molecule, which is Cl2, it'll be double that. If I know from an experiment, so just from taking a measurement, the mass of that chlorine, then I can use these two together to find the amount. So these three things are linked, and they're linked by this equation. N amount is the mass over the molar mass. And a really almost childish fun way to remember it is that's how you used to draw mountains as a child, and that's how you used to draw seagulls, and seagulls fly over the mountains. Okay? The amount of seagulls flying over the mountains is a nice easy way to remember it. Okay? From this equation here as well, we can find out some other really interesting information. Certain experiments will tell you the percentage composition of a compound. So for example, how, what percentage is carbon, what percentage is hydrogen, what percentage is oxygen, for example, in a certain compound or molecule. Using this equation, you can actually say what the formula of that would be. So we actually use percentage composition to find the formula. And the way that we do that is we say, well, if it's a percentage, per cent means per hundred. So we assume that we have 100 grams of that compound. So if you had 20% oxygen, you'd say, oh, well, if I had 100 grams, 20 grams of that compound would be oxygen. So using this equation, I can work out the amount of oxygen in that compound. And then I just work with ratios, so that's why I said algebra is important. Then I just use ratios to work out what the formula of that would be. So I'm using these three ideas here to work out percentage composition. I also use these ideas here to work out the formula of a hydrated ionic salt. So something like barium chloride, for example, normally has some water inside its crystals. Well, what I could do is I could weigh that, what we call hydrated barium chloride, then I could heat it, boil off all the water out of the crystals, re-weigh it again, and knowing this equation here, I can find the amount of barium chloride, because I can work out its molar mass in the periodic table, I can work out the amount of water that was evaporated off, and I could tell you how many waters were in its formula. So again, this is for working out a formula. So in the example I gave, barium chloride with an unknown number of waters in its, in its crystal. 
and we'd have to use mole ratios, so again algebra, knowing the number of moles of barium chloride and the number of moles of water molecules, we can work out how many water molecules should go in here. Because this should be one, according to the equation, one barium chloride with how many waters. And that's quite a cool experiment that we could do if you choose to. Right? So again, this information leads us to being able to do some real chemistry, finding out something that we don't know. What is the quantity of water in a barium chloride crystal, for example? Okay. So that's sort of the, the stuff you're going to be given almost like a test on. All right. So that's the stuff that's the theory if you're really good at the second day of the internal assessment for this. But it's also pretty cool chemistry. Now, if we come the other way, now we're looking at stuff that we use titrations for. So experiments which use burettes, pipettes, a whole lot of equipment you haven't used yet, but you still may use um, just recently and in the last lesson. Again, amount is our central idea. So this is our big thing. Okay. And from a known concentration, what we call a standard solution, we do a, re a reaction called a titration, and when that experiment or reaction is finished, we call that the end point. And that's able, sorry, and we can do some calculations to work out how much the amount of the unknown was there. And then from that, we can work out, well, I can't know how much we used. I know what volume I used, because it says it on the burette. So from that, I can calculate the concentration. So... By doing a titration, I can then use my amount to find out my concentration. And this one has a little equation to use as well, where the concentration is the amount divided by the volume. The biggest trick, sorry, the biggest failing that students have here is they forget to change the volume. Okay, volume's a capital V, so the unit is a capital as well. So it's not millilitres, which is what your burette says, it's litres. You have to convert the unit. It sort of makes sense too, because it's moles per litre. So you have to convert that unit first. That's the biggest mistake that students make. Once I know that, I can convert it into a more meaningful unit, which is grams per litre. So these two, are also nicely linked. And if I know the volume that I used, then I can find my mass again. So you start seeing how all of these start tying together. Right. The way that I go from here to here is basically they're both per litre. So it's the same as going from moles to mass. So if I rearrange that equation, I've got that. I can look that up on a periodic table. I'm trying to find that because the per litres is a uniform unit. Okay. And so all I'm doing here, this way, is going multiplying by the molar mass. To go this way, if I'm multiplying that way, that way I must be dividing. And these two units here are a little bit different. This is per cent, so again per 100, so per 100 mils. So if I had, for example, 10 grams per litre, I'd only have 1 gram in 100 mils, wouldn't I? So to go this way, I divide by 10. So to go the other way, I'm sorry, it isn't very clear, so I'll change colour. I'm going to multiply by 10 if I've got the percentage and I need the grams per litre. You could be asked to go any direction in this. Okay, so you need to know how all of it links together. And we're going to do a video later on titration techniques because this is the place that most students fall down in the internal, is their titration technique is not good enough. All right, so that's a wee overview. Hopefully that will help us build our learning sequence from that.